There are many things that we are taught to believe that are wrong. One of those is genetics. The human body contains 100 trillion cells. Each cell contains a nucleus, except the red blood cells. Each nucleus contains 46 chromosomes, arranged in 23 pairs. One chromosome of every pair is from each parent. The chromosomes are filled with tightly coiled strands of DNA. Genes are segments of DNA that contain instructions to make proteins, the building blocks of life. Apart from sperm, eggs, and red blood cells, every cell in our bodies carries our entire genetic package. It is mind-bogglingly small with all the chromosomes, 23 from each parent, inside each cell's nucleus. This complete genetic package is called nuclear DNA. Outside the nucleus of each cell, floating in the cytoplasm, tiny organelles called mitochondria contain even more DNA, called mitochondrial DNA. Unlike nuclear DNA, mitochondrial DNA contains only a very small amount of genetic material, and all of that is inherited entirely from females. Scientists are able to manipulate genes through a process known as gene splicing. They use chemical scissors to cut gene segments away from where they belong in the DNA strand, and then use other chemicals to insert or splice those living, working segments anywhere else in the gene strand. The possibilities for altering an organism are endless, as are the possibilities for making mistakes. Human DNA carries an improbable number of defects, over 4,000 compared to just a few hundred in chimps and gorillas. Of these 4,000 plus defects in the human genome, more than two dozen will kill you before you reach the age of puberty. While it is possible for a deadly genetic defect to not be expressed and to just move passively from parent to child, imagine the odds that this would happen often enough to spread this unique type of defect through the entire human population. Impossible might be too strong a word, but it is staggeringly improbable that this would happen naturally. There must be a more rational solution. Remember the ability to splice genes and the huge potential for error. What if something like that happened to humans to create our genetic defects? Would evidence be left behind? Amazingly, that is exactly what research has uncovered. Evidence of gene segments that have been cut, flipped, and then reinserted upside down back into the genome. And that is just the beginning. This shows the chromosome lineup for humans, chimps, gorillas, and orangutans. Notice the remarkable similarity in much of their banding arrays. However, humans carry only 46 chromosomes, while all of the other higher primates, supposedly the creatures we evolved from, carry 48. This is not a transition from one step to another. This is a transformation. How could we evolve into a creature with two whole fewer chromosomes and vastly more genetic defects? How could humans be so much better than chimps with two entire chromosomes missing? Remarkably, the two missing chromosomes aren't missing at all. In humans, what would be the second and third chromosomes in a higher primate have been carefully and deliberately fused into one single chromosome. Of course, mainstream scientists explain this as a natural mutation that just happened to occur at some point in our evolution. However, the truth is that fusions like this are only seen in labs where geneticists leave exactly the same kind of telltale evidence in the genes they manipulate. Occam's razor is a scientific principle that says the simplest answer is usually the correct one. At this time, the only rational, simple explanation for how human genes came to look like they were genetically manipulated is that they were genetically manipulated. The smoking gun so obvious in our DNA is not the only evidence for manipulation. Most humans currently accept Darwin's theory of evolution that humans gradually evolve from primates. Let's forget for a moment that the human genome contains those 4,000 plus errors, something extremely unlikely to have evolved by a process of natural selection. 
and focus on a positive difference between humans and primates. The cerebral cortex is the deeply convoluted surface of the brain, an area strongly linked to intelligence. A rat's cerebral cortex flattened out would cover a postage stamp, a monkey's a postcard, a chimp's a page of typing paper, but a human's covers the equivalent of four pages of paper. In 1987, new research into the mitochondrial Eve theory proved that humans, as we are today, came into existence rather suddenly at only about 200,000 years ago. To have somehow developed four times the cerebral cortex in such a short time period is an extremely dramatic and sudden difference which, like the genetic defects and evidence of gene splicing, cannot be explained by a slow and selective process of evolution. Occam's razor would require that, if the evidence shows it is almost impossible for humans to have naturally evolved, and if there is evidence of genetic manipulation, then humans probably are the products of genetic manipulation rather than evolution. And yet science still refuses to undertake a serious investigation of this simple and logical answer. Instead, they have invented a new convoluted explanation to try to make sense of it all, the genetic bottleneck theory. A genetic bottleneck is caused when most of a species dies out for one reason or another, leaving only a few breeding pairs to begin regenerating the species. The stress of this supposedly causes an explosion of extreme Darwinian evolution, which accounts for the transformation that occurred to make humans what they are. There is no actual evidence for this extreme evolution ever having occurred with humans or for any sort of near-extinction event which might have caused it but it is the only theory science has proposed to explain how a species only 200,000 years old could have advanced so much compared to other species like chimps or gorillas which seem not to have changed at all in that same time period. When explained by someone in a lab coat using scientific jargon, the bottleneck theory may sound plausible, but when you consider all of the events that need to happen to make the theory work, and the fact that no evidence exists to support any of them, it simply doesn't make sense. Human genes show evidence of genetic manipulation. Human brains show evidence that humans suddenly transformed rather than gradually evolved. Human mitochondrial DNA suggests that the modern human species came into being 200,000 years ago, which rules out gradual mutation leaving no plausible natural explanation for humans being as advanced as they are. The logical answer is that humans didn't actually evolve on Earth. They were genetically created to live here and our genes prove it.